Let's Knit Together is made possible by your contributions. Please consider giving a donation on the website. Hi there, I'm Kat. Let's Knit Together! In March, Eric and I took a trip to the South by Southwest Conference in Austin, Texas to meet with other new media folks and learn a bit about how to improve what we're doing with Let's Knit Together. One of the more unusual sessions we went to was called Soapbox Spielbergs, Making Hollywood Effects on an Indie Budget. Eric and I volunteered to perform in a test video that Eric Beck from the Indie Mogul Video Podcast was doing during the session. The demonstration was designed to illustrate a simple illusion created by panning the camera. Check it out. It's a short clip, but it was a lot of fun to make. You can find it here on Vimeo and watch it over and over if you want. Stephen from the Why Knit Podcast also did a presentation which was called Community, Lessons for Marketers from Online Crafting. It was a roundtable discussion and we all talked about how different marketers have leveraged the crafting community. Afterwards, a few of us decided to go to a local yarn shop called The Knitting Nest. It was such a lovely and homey store. When I first walked in, I noticed a dining room and family room on the left and beautiful yarns on the right. They had every shade of Cascade 220 along one wall and some luxury yarns next to them. In the aisles, there were cute little accessories and next to the checkout desk was their dog Hanks, named for Tom Hanks. After doing a little shopping, we all sat on the comfortable couches and spent some time chatting and knitting with the locals. On the wall facing the couches was an original Franklin Habit drawing of Dolores the Sheep, and on the other wall, a remembrance of the visit from Casey and Jess from Ravelry. Stacy from the shop was quite sweet, and I ended up buying a few knitting patterns and some Ruby Queensland Katmandu Aran, which I'd never seen before. Afterward, we all went to dinner at the Magnolia Cafe and enjoyed a great meal before going back to the hotel. The Knitting Nest was such a homey shop, and I'm definitely going back again next year. If you're in Austin, Texas, you should check it out. The week after going to Austin, I made a stop at a shop called Creative Networks in Hillsdale, New Jersey. Marsha from my knitting group told me about it, and I realized that it was right near the Hillsdale train station, which is a few stops before mine. So one evening, I snuck out of work a little early and got off the train to go check it out. In the window were some lovely knitted items in what is now my favorite green color. Along the walls and center aisles were many lovely colored yarns all set up for spring. In the back of the store there were stacks and stacks of pattern books and a space for sitting and relaxing. Sharon, the owner, said that she has knit and spin nights during the week, so I might stop by another time. Before leaving, I bought a sweater's worth of Bristol Somerset in a cotton silk blend in the green color that she had in the window. I'm making the fan kimono from the Knit Kimono book by Vicki Square. After just finding the store, it turns out they're moving to a bigger space in Westwood, New Jersey in August. I'll have to check them out again after they move. Viewers have been asking me to compare Cookie A's sock innovation and Wendy Johnson's socks from the toe up. Both of these books have great sock knitting tips and wonderful sock patterns. Cookie A's book focuses on cut down socks and the sock patterns have her trademark stunning stitch patterns that usually require deep concentration. The book has a really great section about how to design your own stitch patterns for socks. Wendy's book focuses on toe up socks and has a wonderful section on different heels, toes and other techniques so you can design your own socks. Her projects range from the very simple to elegant, and she even includes some socks using sport weight yarn. I really like both books quite a lot, and I know I'll be making many patterns from both. Our next live show is on Saturday, July 25th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Join us to share your progress with the spin-along and knit-along, or whatever you're working on. Go to lessonetogether.com slash live for details. Our show was mentioned in issue number 7 of The Knitter a high-quality glossy magazine from the UK. I can tell you, it's quite strange to open up one of my favorite magazines and come across a picture of myself. We really appreciate the mention. 
The knitter is relatively new, so if you haven't looked through it yet, check it out! I bought socks from the Toe Up as soon as I saw it on Wendy Nett's website. A week later, the publisher sent me a copy to review here on the show. Then after that, I was invited to a luncheon at Potter's Craft in New York, and they gave everybody a copy. So now I have three! Around the same time, Kath from the Knitter Scarlet Etsy store sent me these two sets of gorgeous stitch markers to give away. So let's have a giveaway! Just answer this question. What's your favorite way to knit socks? Toe up or cuff down? Leave your answer in the comments for this episode number 52 by July 22nd at LessonTogether.com. There will be two winners. Each winner will get a copy of the book and a set of stitch markers. We'll announce the winners in our next episode. Remember, this show is supported by you, our viewers. Please consider leaving a donation on our website. You can make a single donation or select one of the monthly recurring donations. Thanks. I really like both books quite a lot, and I know I'll be making many patterns from both. Mm. Mm. Sorry. Okay. I'll have to check them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright. I don't know how silly I'm going to look in them. You're not going to look silly at all because the book's going to cover your head. Which will look silly. I'll be bookhead. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> You're breathing. Can't help it. Okay, that's good. I think we've got that show. <laughs>